All right, good afternoon. We got us a nuke here. You've seen this one in some, uh, maybe one of the previous videos. Um, it's got quite a bit of activity. I was, I put a jar of feet on it last night and when I popped the jar off, it looked like it had a pretty good number of bees in there. So um, I got an opportunity today. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna put it into a, a 10 frame box. So we're gonna show you how to put this nuke into a full size box. So um, first I'm just gonna move it out of the way, set it right up here in the front. And get this feed off of it. Set this box up right on my clip. And in this box I have, I have some drawn comb we went to the blueberries yesterday to see how they were doing. Uh, how much, how, you know, we added some boxes to them. There was a few colonies that I dumped out on the ground. So I got some, I got some drawn comb. We're going to use it. So I want to make space. I'm going to put two frames on each side here like this. I got plenty of room to work. Oh. There we go. And let's see what we got here. I'm just going to drop these right in the box um, how they have it oriented in here I'm not going to change what they've been doing so I'm going to take these five frames out and set them exactly the same in in this 10 frame box if you buy a nuke yeah they could they probably could they could stay in this box for another week or so but like I said I got the opportunity today I'm gonna to go ahead and put them in there it ain't gonna hurt nothing but when you buy uh, yourself a nuke this is pretty much what you're gonna get five frame nuke and this is how you're going to do it you bring it home you can set it in the place where you want your 10 frame hive to be eventually or where you on your hive stand in this case the pallet but uh you can set your nuke up there you can leave it there for a day or two and let them kind of orient to that spot and then um, when you get opportunity you can switch them over into your 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 10 frame box or eight frame if you're running eight frame equipment so this is how we're going to do it Give some smoke. We're gonna pull that outside frame. We'll see what they got going on too while we're in here. I'll talk about it a little bit. So uh, they've started drawing comb out on this side. It's not all foundation, there's some comb here. This side here, full of eggs. You probably can't see it on the camera. I'll hold it up close. Those down in those cells, it's, I can see it's full of eggs. It's laid up. So that frame really don't have any more space for that queen to lay, except on this back side when they finish it. So I'm gonna stuff it right down in there how we found it out of this box. Next frame coming out. What we got? Uh, see a bunch of larvae. I see eggs. See if y'all can see those little white pearly larvae in there. This side, same thing, larva in the middle, the oldest. And then on the outside, we got some, some eggs. Frame number three. Okay, that's a pretty much all sealed brood. The larva has been capped over. It's in the final stage before it will hatch. 
Here's the other side. It's a little bit older brood, it's capped over. When I say brood, I mean baby bees. These, all this brown right here, that's going to be baby bees. They're gonna, that, they're gonna hatch and they're gonna populate this hive even more. So there's one, two, this will be a third frame of brood. This will be the, the first frame of sealed cat brood. There's three frames of brood for the most part. Well, eggs, larva, cat brood. Here's another brood frame. That's a nice looking brood frame. All sealed brood, honey around the outside, some pollen. Same thing on this side, all sealed brood. This hive's about to get a uh, big boost in bees. They're gonna be on their way here soon. Okay, I've got one more frame in here left. What do we got? It rained today. This hive was, this five frame nuke was slightly tilted back a little bit. <laughs> There's nowhere in this nuke box for the water to go. So it does have a little water puddled up in there. So that comes out like that. There's the queen. You know, in this spot right here, we're famous for dropping the queen on the ground. I'll let you try and spot her. So she's out here on this outside frame looking for somewhere to lay. She's right here at the bottom of this frame. So she needs some drawn combs. She needs a spot to lay because she's out of room. She's got, this here is mostly pollen. There's a small patch of brood over here to my left. But um, she's laying eggs on top of, of pollen in, down in, inside them cells. She needs room. To keep your bees going forward and to keep them from swarming, you want to always give them space. You want to always have somewhere for that queen to be laying. And they'll clean all these up here. They got a lot of, yesterday I dumped that colony out, these come out of, and they had a lot of, um, there's there a lot of nectar shaking out of these frames. They were in it over there. They're in it here too. They've been working hard. So typically I would bang this on the ground and then dump the bees right on top and let them file on down through the frames. Like I said, there's a lot of water in the bottom of this box. Not a lot, but there is water. I don't want to really dump that in my hive. We could probably pour that out. Can you see it down there? I'm going to be careful. The queen's in the box. So I'm not risking my queen right now. So I'm just going to try to dump some of this water out before I shake these bees off in this box. Okay, so let's see here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smack them in there. Caught a few bees in this little nuke. That's it, we got an empty box now. We'll get that out of the equation, get it out of the way so they don't get back all in there. But they're already oriented this spot. My nuke was already here. It's been here for a few weeks. So they already know this is, the, this is their home spot. This didn't have anywhere for the water to go and I had it on a slight, I had it on a little bit of an angle like this so that water was collecting in the back here. You always want to set your hives up level or at least tip forward a little bit so that water will run out. On these pallets, I've got 5 8 holes drilled basically in the bottom board on these pallets, on, one on each corner. That way if water does come up in here, it'll, it'll get out in that corner. One corner or the other. Because on a pallet, when you move these around, like I don't have a forklift or a skid steer or whatever. I have a tractor with forks on it, a small tractor with forks. You can't always set your pallet up on level ground. So we drill holes in the corner so that water will have somewhere to go. If you've got a hive stand at home on two by fours or four by fours or whatever it is, you know, 
Um, take the time and make them, make them level or make them at least tilt forward and let that water out. You don't want to give extra work for your bees that's not needed. They already got enough to do. They're trying to build comb and raise young and put you some honey away. You don't want to give them extra work. I don't like extra work. Anybody knows me knows that. So that's pretty much how you install your little uh, nuke into a 10 frame box. It's, it's, not, it's not rocket science. And since they, they got a lot of drawn comb, they're raising a lot of brood, they've got eggs, larvae, all that bait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna feed this hive, at least this jar and maybe another jar, but I mean, we're in some nectar right now. So they're not gonna need feed for too much long. Put that right back on top of them. Be careful when you're feeding bees not to spill the feed all over the lid or, or on the ground or anything like that because that attracts bees. And this is a little bit, I mean, it's strong enough to defend itself, but this is, um, it's not that big of a hive. If you got a real weak hive, a small hive, and you start filling, spilling feed around it, you're going to cause a robin situation. Other bees from other colonies are going to come over here and they're going to try and steal all that, that food from them, that feed. And um, that'll really, that could, that could be the end of your colony there. If you get a robin situation going on, typically when we got a nectar flow, like flowers are blooming, palmetto's blooming, whatever, whatever's around you is blooming and the bees are busy bringing in that nectar. They're not too concerned about robin, but um, some months of the year, they, they rob hard. They'll pick on them weak colonies. So you gotta be careful about that. Do not, I do not like the feeders, um, that you slide here in the entrance and you got a little jar outside, that's that's no good. You wanna feed inside or, you know, with a jar like this, I like the jars. I do feed buckets sometimes, a little one gallon buckets. I don't really care for them because I can't see what's in the bucket. And the bucket will tend to leak a lot on the, on the hive top. So a lot of people use them, but I don't really care for them. I like the jars um, because you can see. If you, if you put jars on all your, your bees and then all the bees are sucking down the feed and then you've got one colony that only you know he's only got this much feed missing out of the jar they're not taking it down you know there's a problem without even opening that up you know something's going on so i like to be able to visually see my feed that's one good thing about the jars um anyway my new lids i'm going to start making two holes i'm going to make a hole here and a hole here so i can feed more than half a gallon at a time because some colonies will suck this down in a matter of you know two days and uh, it'd be nice to have two jars in there and get a gallon of feed on them. So I'm gonna start putting two holes. Um, bad thing about jars I don't like is they're, they're fragile. If you ain't careful, you'll be busting them. But, and I got a great deal on a, a couple hundred of those jars. So uh, that, that persuaded me that way too. Um, let's back up and look at this hive the camera's sitting on. We put a super on this hive not too long ago. Y'all was with me for that. I'll reset up the camera and um, so y'all can see a little bit better and we'll pop it open and, and we'll see what they're doing. All right, let's check them out. Give them a little smoke, run them down. We don't want to pop the lid and the pile of bees be up in our way. I want to see what we got. Okay, so you remember we put this, it's only been, I mean, it's been a week or two. I'm not sure, it ain't been that long. We put this in there, it was all, if I'm not mistaken yet, it was all foundation. Every one of these was just plastic foundation with a good wax coat on it. And this, I said in that video too, these hives, you know, they could have grew a little bit more in the bottom box before I added a super, but you know, I had the opportunity, like today, let's, you know, I had the supers. Let's go ahead and just throw some supers on there. And we did. And I'm glad I did, because they're working on them. I'm going to come over here. Um, and there's not a queen excluder in this. It was all foundations. So I didn't go with a queen excluder, because I believe, and a lot of people tell you the same thing, then bees will come up and work foundation a lot better 
without the queen excluder on there. Um, if you've got drawn combs already, you know, frames with comb already on it, then you can throw your queen excluder there and they're more likely to come up there and, and start filling that comb with nectar. Um, anyway, I'm not get too far out in the weeds. So they're not working on that yet. We got one, two here to the edge. This one they're starting to work on. So you can see a little bit of this. So you can start to see them drawing that white wax out a little bit. They're just, just starting to pull that wax out. Dang, one got me right here on the daggum, on the inner thigh. Just one heck of a spot to get right there. Woo. When I get stung on my pants, I like, see they're, they're starting to get after me. It's another crappy day. We got bad weather. Been raining, windy, all that mess. If they if they pop you on the leg or right here in the on my jacket, give that area a good smoke, or else you'll have a couple more bees piling in there trying to sting you up. Let's just let's just smoke them down some more. Get them down out of the way. All right, let's get into a little bit of honey or something. Look at that. Like I said, I think two weeks ago this was all foundation. And they're pulling it out. It's comb now. And if you see that yellow in there. They're starting to fill it up. They might put some brood up here. I don't know. Nope, that's all honey. That nice golden color down in themselves. All honey right there. They're going to need another super before long. Better get to work. Oh, see, there is a little bit of brood. But that's okay. I'm all right with that. They got eggs in there. You can tell they've got the honey going on right here. And then this is clean. You can't probably see it on my camera, especially in this light today, but there is little eggs down in those cells. So they're laying up, they're laying in my, my honey super, but if they lay too much up here, if that queen gets up here and lays too much, what I'll do is I'll, um, when they, obviously they're working it good. If I had a queen excluder, I could probably do this today but I shake all the bees down into that bottom box, put a queen excluder on, and then put this box back on. That way, uh, shaking all the bees down lets you know for certain that the queen is downstairs. You don't want to trap the queen up here in your super with that excluder. There's some brood, so she's laying on, she's laying this. That's sealed brood there. It'll be all right. She'll lay this up. They're, they're getting, they're just now getting into that nectar flow. They'll start packing all this with honey and they'll, they'll push that nest down. There's brood. More brood. But I'm happy with what we're seeing here. I mean, they haven't been fed. They're bringing it in. They're pushing forward. They're growing in numbers. I mean, what more could you want? All right, we're done looking at this. What what you can do, and I, I'm gonna do it right now, is like this here is just foundation. They ain't started working on the lick. I'm gonna put it right here in between some found, some um, frames that are already drawn. They call that checkerboarding. When you put blank foundations in between drawn combs, it kind of the bees will usually work from the middle out. So if you can take some of these frames that they're not working yet and put them in between frames that they are actively working, it'll kind of entice them to get on those, start working these foundations a little quicker to fill in that empty space. But I mean, I could have left it alone. They're doing a great job, but um, we're done here. We've got seven frames drawn and one partial and two blanks. So I'll probably be bringing another super down here. Um, probably in the next week. I mean, why not? They're strong enough to defend the space and they're gonna need it. We're just now starting to get in this nectar flow pretty good. 
So uh, these bees are gonna make us a little bit of honey. Anyway, I'm gonna check out a few more bees around here. Thanks for watching my video. Like and subscribe. And uh, y'all have a good, good day.